Freedom is now listed as a cause of death in police reports across the country. They also say it produces an opioid-like effect. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel! Yay! Oh my gosh, it's been forever! I'm finally here with the Truth About Kratom video. I hope that you guys enjoy it. I wanted to have interviews in it, but COVID happened and it made it super, super difficult. I have a long interview with Matt from the American Kratom Association where we take a deep dive into all things, legal, Kratom, debts, all this stuff, responsibly buying Kratom. Uh, I'm gonna make that another video because it's like 40 minutes long. This video is just gonna be some facts what you need to know, what I think is important to know about the plants. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Uh, what else do I have to say? Uh, the effects, the laws, uh, deaths, drug testing in Kratom, and we're going to talk about a few other things. But those are the main things that we're gonna chat about in this video. Also, I have a conspiracy theory. And I just remembered that I didn't tell you guys about it and I'm gonna add it to the end of the video. So enjoy the video. Love you guys so much. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out many more videos now that I'm on a roll and I love you all very, very much. Bye. To film a video. I'm just gonna move you right over here. Okay, so just get comfortable and you can go back to work when I'm done. Okay? Thank you. The truth, Kratom. Now I'm gonna preface this video by saying I do not endorse or oppose Kratom, Kratom, however you say it, guys. I'm gonna say Kratom. If you say it differently, comment down below. Let me know how you say it. I know this might drive some people crazy, but I don't endorse or oppose Kratom. My theory and philosophy on drugs or anything like that is that education is key. Just say no doesn't work educating people about different substances and plants and drugs and whatever you want to call all of them, I think is super important. I think people, you know, are smart and given the information, you guys can make your own decisions. Also, this video is not just for people in recovery. We're going to talk about what I maybe think or feel my opinion on recovery and Kratom later down the line. These are just facts and information about Kratom. So let's get started. What is this Kratom you talk of? <laughs> Kratom is a plant or like kind of like more like a tree. It's from Southeast Asia, places like Papua New Guinea, Thailand, Indonesia. This tree grows naturally there and the indigenous people of that area have been using this plant for many, many, many thousands of years. Kratom, also known as Mychaganja speciosa, my, my tragonite. I think it's my tragonite speciosa. That's like the scientific term. And it is, I think, botanical biological cousins with the coffee plant. Right now, there are no medical uses for kratom, but people have been using this plant for many years to treat things such as pain, opioid withdrawal, digestive system or digestive issues like diarrhea, and a few other things. Here are a list of some of the pros and cons of the effects that kratom will have on your body if you ingest it. The effects that vary by user include the positive effects of stimulation, sedation, euphoria, greater sexual desire, enhanced work output, greater sociability, increased motivation, pain release, and fatigue reduction. Some negatives are dizziness, nausea, vomiting, hangover, itchiness, and reduced sexual performance. Now, if you take a small dose of the kratom, you'll have a stimulant-like effect, and if you take a higher dose, you're going to have a more of a depressant effect. People think that the type of kratom may influence the effect, and there are different kinds of kratom, red vein, green vein, and white vein. After ingesting kratom, the onset or the effects will last about two to four hours, and the half-life is about six hours. As you can see, there are some benefits and some risks associated with ingesting this plant. Uh, you could really, really want to have a, but you may not be able to, you know what I'm saying? So it could be a catch-22 there. One of the like number one health risks I've seen doing all this research associated with Kratom really is the constipation. There has been very few people that have died and we're gonna go over that later. I think it's about 44 people have died and Kratom was listed as the reason why though 
I think maybe only two of those people did not have other drugs in their system. But besides that, a lot of the information I read said that constipation is probably one of the biggest risks associated with regular kratom. See this video of this guy up in this big tree cutting down a bunch of kratom. And here we see the skies high as heaven in this tree, uh, getting a bunch of kratom leaves down there. And basically, in the indigenous areas, people chew on these leaves, but in America, we make these leaves and crush it down into a smaller leaf like powder and ingest it orally. In America, where there's almost 15 million estimated users of this plant, that leaf is usually ground up into a, like a finer leaf and people either just ingest the leaf, a capsule full of it, or they make some sort of like kratom tea. Down in South Florida, we have over 20 different kinds of kava bars and places where you can find kratom. Here's the liquid kratom and it's basically just kratom tea, so kratom brewed with water. Kratom is most widely known as the plant that mimics the effect of opiates, though not nearly as strong as any opiate out on the market. The reality is that kratom does hit your mu opioid receptors. The interesting thing about this plant and its 40 alkaloids, which gives it a very unique profile and a variety of effects when ingested, it doesn't suppress your respiratory system. If you guys know anything about opiates and opioid overdose, you guys know that the way an opioid overdose happens is through suppression of your respiratory system. You basically slowly stop breathing, your brain doesn't get any oxygen, and that's when a person would pass away, or they would be given naloxone, Narcan. I think this is probably one of the most scientifically interesting things about the Kratom plant, and this is why I'm glad they have not made it illegal yet. Speaking of the legalities of Kratom, we have come a long way. It has been an interesting battle. So in 2016, the FDA said that we're gonna ban Kratom in 30 days. Month, the Drug Enforcement Administration announced its intent to ban it. But News Channel 8's Jamel Lene joins us now live in Pinellas County. And Jamel, Kratom is expected to go on that banned drug list this Friday, right? That's what's expected, but we're still waiting to see if that will happen. But in the meantime, more than 130,000 people signed this petition to the White House, hoping to keep Kratom from being banned. The DEA says there has been 15 Kratom-related deaths between 2014 and 2016 and can be abused. They put it in tea, take it in various forms, and it has a euphoric effect that actually some would argue has a medicinal value to it. Others say no, it's a problem. Sheriff Bob Goltieri says if the DEA bans it, those caught with it will face fines. And basically when they said that, people were like, fuck no you're not, <laughs> which I don't know if that's ever been done before. but. 30 days came and the FDA didn't ban it because uh, like 160,000 people signed a petition, like 40,000 people wrote the president and people were genuinely upset. Analgesic product they say is safer than the painkillers legally prescribed by doctors. One of them is the founder of the American Kratom Association, Susan Ash. Like I said earlier, 15 million people estimated use Kratom for a multitude of different reasons. The American Kratom Association, who I have an interview with later in this video, told me that they basically did a poll or a survey of all these Kratom users. And um, a third of them use it in the morning in like instead of coffee to like get their day going because uh, it does give you energy in like the a lower amount ingested. The other third uh, use it as like a mood enhancer throughout the day. And the other third of that group of people use it for some sort of pain relief. Now people really like the idea of being able to use a plant versus some sort of pharma pharmacological <laughs> whatever you guys know what I'm saying, pill to like get pain relief. Cause obviously it's really scary with the opioid epidemic going on to get these pills from a doctor and take them every day. Further on about the legalities of Kratom, there are a few countries that have banned it altogether. One of the countries is Thailand, which is one of the main exporters of Kratom, Australia, and a few European countries as well as Malaysia, which is another place that this plant grows, you know, like, organically. Pretty interesting. If you look into the history of why Kratom was banned in a couple of these countries where it grows, it's mainly because it was messing up their poppy export back in the day or their heroin export back in the day, opium, whatever it was. And so they banned the like, you know, use of it or whatever. In America, Kratom is banned in a few states. So 
even though the FDA did not get their full, they wanted to make it a schedule one substance next to like LSD, okay, and heroin. Even though that didn't go through, it's still banned in a couple states. These states are Indiana, Wisconsin, Alabama, Arkansas, Rhode Island, and I think I'm missing one, one second, <laughs> Vermont. And there's a couple states that have it legal, but a few cities that have made it illegal. One of these cities, funny enough, is Denver, Colorado. I thought that was like a little strange. <laughs> Moron, FDA and Kratom, <laughs> the saga. Basically, the FDA warns everybody to not touch Kratom. They say that basically it poses the risk to any users of addiction and dependence, um, potential threats of that. And the reality is if you use Kratom every day, just like if you use its botanical cousin coffee every day, you're going to experience withdrawal effects. The withdrawals from Kratom are definitely gonna be more severe than coffee, but they're definitely less severe than methadone or morphine or oxy. And I think it's super important to talk about this. Kratom can for sure be habit forming. You are taking something that hits your mu opioid receptors. It works as a type of opioid agonist and you ingest an opioid like that, it starts to affect your body in different ways, right? So let's say somebody uses Kratom every single day for three to six months. Obviously, just like every other drug, it's gonna depend on how much you're taking, how long, and your personal body matters uh, when it comes to detoxification and how you feel from withdrawal. But every day taking this medicine, it would be like taking Imodium every single day. If you stop taking Imodium, all of a sudden you're gonna have really bad diarrhea. Same with Kratom. Since Kratom stops, uh, you know, it messes with your digestive system. When you quit, you're gonna probably have pretty bad diarrhea. You're probably gonna have a hard time sleeping or you might uh, not feel as happy. I'm not a scientist, but one thing I do know about my body and about your body is we are drugs, right? Our body is basically water and drugs. And you know, endorphins, serotonin, all these things that are in our brains that are able to be produced are produced naturally. And um, so when you put something into your body that is able to create these drugs for your brain instead of your brain doing it naturally and then you take that away, right? Your brain's gonna have to get used to making those chemicals on its own again. So there's gonna be like a moment there where you're not feeling the best. I believe that Kratom uh, detox and withdrawal varies, but I also know a lot of people use Kratom to withdraw from other opiates. I know many a heroin user that had, could not get into detox for whatever reason that has used Kratom uh, to try and ease their withdrawals from the heroin. And though it definitely will take away some of the withdrawals, it's not gonna make you feel automatically better like maybe a Suboxone or Methadone would. We all know that those drugs are also very addictive and super, super, duper strong. I feel like uh, people who love Kratom, who are huge proponents of Kratom, they don't wanna talk about uh, possible dependency because they're excited about it. Um, just like people who love pot or who love any other substance or gambling or whatever it is, they may deny some of the more negative effects of whatever it is because they just want people to try it and they're super excited about it. I totally get it, but you guys know, like I said earlier, I think education's key. If you know that, hey, there's a substance out there that could help me with this pain, I don't wanna take an opiate, um, but I do know if I take this uh, plant every day, I could experience some mild to moderate withdrawals you know, you know, and that's what I'm here for. There are two more things I wanna talk about when it comes to Kratom. One of them is drug testing. Is there a drug test for Kratom? And two, deaths associated with Kratom. Let's talk about it. Jughead's gonna help me teach you guys about Kratom and the drug test that they have for it. It's so good, Jughead, Jughead, it's okay. So this is my cat, his name's Jughead. I rescued him a few months ago. Who's such a good boy? He really loves when I hold them. <laughs> so basically, when it comes to Kratom, there's definitely a drug test for it, and I actually have it here. So back in the day, there definitely wasn't a drug test for Kratom that was a dipstick form. People would genuinely, generally have to go to like a lab and have the urine tested in a laboratory uh, for Kratom. But now, there is a dipstick test, and let me show it to you guys. Do you want to show them, Jughead? Do you want to show them the drug test, Jughead? So, hold on. Hold. 
This is a Kratom drug test. All right, go ahead, Jim. This is a Kratom drug test. So <clears throat> this is your average 12th panel drug test, and these are the things that are on it. Marijuana, THC, cocaine, morphine, oxy, amphetamine, benzos, barbiturates, um, other opiates, PCP, methadone, MDMA, and buprenorphine. That's this drug test. But what I also have from a convention I went to last year before COVID came is this Kratom test. And this is a Kratom dipstick test. Uh, so these are relatively new, but you can be tested for Kratom. Uh, you know, I don't think at probation or whatever, but if you're in rehab, you're probably gonna be tested for Kratom. I would suggest not even trying it if you're in a sober living. I think you should probably be focused on your recovery um, and things of that nature and not be messing around with a thing that messes with your opioid receptors, if that's my personal opinion. But they do make a drug test for it, so I wanted to show you guys that. Oh, the deaths. When it comes to Kratom and Kratom-related deaths, there have been 44 reported Kratom-related deaths, which we're gonna go into just a little bit. We're just gonna scratch the surface of these 44 Kratom-related deaths. Now, yearly dietary supplements, which is kind of what Kratom is considered, send over 23,000 people to the emergency rooms. In a country of 300 million people, I'm not sure if I feel like that's like a ton, but it's definitely a decent amount of people. When it comes to deaths from Kratom, 44 people is definitely 44 people. But when you dig deeper into these deaths, there seems to be a common theme. So when you start Googling Kratom related deaths, you're gonna see like DEA, FDA, um, you know, a bunch of different rehab, drug rehab centers, all writing reports on this. So when I Googled Kratom deaths, basically, like I said, all these articles popped up and they're scary, right? But when I actually clicked on them to do a little bit more research, almost all of them say the same thing. 80% of these users had a history of using other drugs and almost every case had fentanyl was also listed as a cause of death. As I've talked about, there are a good amount of people who attempt to use Kratom to starve off opioid withdrawal symptoms. That means that there are an amount of opioid users already who are using Kratom. So you, if you have regular opiates, illicit opiates, and Kratom in their system at the same time, I'm not sure if you can say that that's a Kratom-related death. We also know Kratom does not affect your respiratory system. The American Kratom Association, where I'm gonna link the video that we did in its own video because I don't wanna like doctor it all up um, to make it shorter. It is a pretty long interview, it's about 40 minutes. Um, but when I spoke with them, what they did was a Freedom of Information Act to get the information from the United States government about these different deaths. None of these deaths happened in Sweden. And what happened in Sweden is there was a type of Kratom that was being sold. I think it was called like Krypton or something like that. And basically it was adult, like adulterated, adulterated. They added shit to the Kratom. And what they added was basically tramadol. They added enough substance like tramadol to kill anybody that would have ingested it. And I think this is a good place to talk about the importance of if you are going to try Kratom, it's super important to know where you are buying your Kratom from and to do research, whether that be Reddit or other online forums that you can trust. It's super important to make sure what you're buying is, uh, you know, sourced responsibly, basically. Whoop, lost, lost a hoop. So, um, because the majority of these deaths that happen that have been reported came from Kratom that was not produced properly. And so what they're trying to do now, instead of making Kratom illegal, is they're trying to create a system for where it can be responsibly, you know, made by the producers, responsibly sold uh, to people over the age of 18 or 21, and people can responsibly use it by understanding it and having knowledge on the plant. And I really don't want to downplay the dangers that come with using Kratom because every single person is different. And there are a list of negative side effects that can happen to you if you use this plant and it doesn't agree with your body. These different negative side effects include, in addition to my list earlier, like hallucinog hallucinations, hallucinations, constipation, problems urinating, depression, weight loss, dry mouth, 
chills, nausea, vomiting, uh, muscle pains, muscle twitching, a bunch of different things. So, um, and obviously it could, you could die from it. There have been 44 people that have died from it. So that is obviously a risk if it's happened before. So I think that's definitely important to note. Um, <clears throat> and you should definitely, if you're going to try Kratom, look up dosing recommendations, how much you should use. Start small, like any other thing if you've never taken it before. Different supplements affect different people in different ways, obviously. I don't think I need to tell you guys that. We also know that it can cause, you know, uh, some sort of dependence, a uh, physical or mental dependence on the plant. And that's because it acts like an opioid, uh, a, a very mild opioid, but still. And for those in recovery, this could be dangerous because anything that might affect your opioid receptors might set off a phenomenon of craving for you, as well as uh, if you're able to sustain on the Kratom without going back to an opiate, that's great. But some people might feel guilty for using it and that could cause a relapse. Some people uh, may be shunned or shamed by their other sober friends, especially if they're in a 12 step program. And that could, you know, begin the beginning, the relapse cycle, right? There's many steps a person has to take before they actually pick up, but. Uh... Sorry, that scared me. <laughs> Isolation is definitely one of those steps in the relapse cycle. Um, and also, if you're spending a lot of money on Kratom, Kratom is not super cheap. So if you start spending a lot of money on it, it could be easy to be like, well, oh, it's cheaper to do X, Y, and Z. I don't want to spend money on this anymore. So, you know, those to me are the biggest risks for those people in recovery. Um, but if you have some sort of chronic pain and doctors want to put you on opioid medication and you don't want to do it, look into Kratom. Why not? Police officers, lawyers, doctors, pharmacists, I mean, plumbers, car mechanics, insurance brokers, the list goes on. You know, engineers, like there's a ton of people, uh, a variety of people who decide to use a herbal plant. And I think it's super cool. Just like people who smoke pot, there's a super large array of pot smokers. To me, I'll always tell you guys, I think the most dangerous drug in the entire world is alcohol. And um, if there should be a reform on anything, maybe it should be that or more education or something, I'm not sure. Alcohol kills twice as many people a year than all opiates combined. Just my little for this video. So guys, if you thought this video was interesting, if you wanna know more about Kratom and the fight against the DEA and all of these other things, I super suggest for you to check out my video that I do um, with Mac from the American Kratom Association. It's so interesting. He literally worked for Health and Human Services. He was uh, chief of staff under the Reagan administration. This guy is really cool and he basically is one of the reasons why Kratom is still legal today. So I really suggest that you check out the interview. And guys, I love you very much. I'm fucking stoked to get this video out, finally. Like, I don't even know what to do with myself. I'm gonna show you like a little clip of all the different me's making this video throughout like the past six months since COVID started. And I just like have not been able to get it done. So, oh my God, I'm like. Shout out to all of you that are still subscribed to my channel. I love you guys so much. Let me know if there's a video I can make. I am back on the video making schedule. My life changed so much after like March. Uh, I had to start, you know, working differently, making money differently. Um, I wasn't able to do any of my speaking engagements at schools anymore. I moved out of my boyfriends. I moved into my condo. I'm single alley. And so I've had a lot of changes happening. So I appreciate you all so much for bearing with me on this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that um, it was somewhat educational and informational and I will see you guys soon. Bye. Also, really quick before I go, I have a conspiracy theory and I just need to throw it in here really quick. I have a conspiracy theory that the Scripps Laboratory and all these laboratories are doing lots of investigation and uh, things on Kratom and I think this is what's gonna happen. If you guys understand uh, addiction treatment, not addiction treatment, but medication assisted treatment, then you know. Okay, let me start over. 
There are three drugs in medication-assisted treatment. Medication-assisted treatment is used to treat opioid and alcohol addictions. So if you're an opioid user, you go to detox. In detox, typically they're gonna give you buprenorphine products, Subutex, Suboxone. If you are on buprenorphine products, you can stop after a seven day detox, wait till it is out of your system, and then you can take naltrexone or Vivitrol, which is a blocker. Okay, some people have a hard time staying on nothing for that window of time. They need to be clean to take the Vivitrol shot. Another thing you can do is you can switch from buprenorphine products, to box and Subutex to methadone. But once you're on methadone, you cannot switch back to Suboxone. If you're on methadone and you want to switch back to Suboxone, you have to be off your methadone for at least seven to 10 days or more, depending on how high your dose is, right? Because you're gonna go into withdrawal because methadone lasts so long in your system. And you definitely can't get on Vivitrol for like a super long time. So as you can see, there are holes in all of these processes, right? You can't get on uh, Vivitrol if you've been recently taking Suboxone, you can't get on Suboxone if you've been recently taking methadone, this whole thing. So I think that they are using Kratom in the lab to try and make a medication where you can take like some Kratom type pill that gets you through that time period. Because interestingly enough, Kratom doesn't like create precipitated withdrawal. Super weird, right? And I don't want, I'm not a scientist. I'm not like, I don't even want to say this is a fact or whatever, but I'm telling you guys, I have seen it firsthand. You can take Kratom and take Subutex and Suboxone and Methadone. So if you can take Suboxone and Kratom at the same time, that means that like, and you can feel the Kratom, that means that the naloxone in the suboxone isn't blocking the kratom like it would any other opiate and it's not putting you into precipitated withdrawal for having these other opiates on your receptors like it would if you were using like heroin or morphine or anything anyway just a little bit of a conspiracy theory i have if you guys want to know more about it we can do a little deep dive and get silly but i just wanted to throw that out there so that if it ever happens you guys can say ali told us they were doing this and hopefully if they make a drug out of Kratom, they still let the plant be legal because I think it's super weird that right now, you know, they just legalized all hard drugs in Washington, a few different states legalized mushrooms, a bunch of states decriminalized, legalized, whatever you want to call it, weed. So I think it'd be really moving backwards to you know, make Kratom illegal, but whatever, just my two cents. So I hope that you enjoyed that little conspiracy theory. It might be confusing for those of you who don't really understand Matt, but if you do, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope I got you thinking and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. Who, what, why, where, and when of it? Who, who, what, how, I say. In February of 2018, the FDA and the CDC investigated a salmonella outbreak uh, related to Kratom, where almost 200 people got sick in 41 states. Now Kratom is illegal. No. Right now, Kratom is legal. I forget to tell you guys that.